Chapter 51 Taking Care of Your Eyes The human eye is not only beautiful, it is a masterpiece of design and expression, far more wonderful than the finest optical instruments made by man. True, your eyes may not be perfect, but even an imperfect eye can be very useful. Most of what we learn is brought to us in some way through our eyes, and nearly everything we do is guided by what we see. Here is a marvelous instrument, a living camera that can focus itself automatically according to the amount of light and the distance of the object we are looking at. Even more remarkable is the fact that we have two of these little cameras, each quite independent of the other, yet working together as one. Long before anyone dreamed of photography, motion pictures, or television, the human body contained these magnificent twin cameras that not only give beauty and expression to the face but inform us constantly of what is going on around us. Before we were born our eyes were already formed. A few weeks after conception the tiny embryo has already begun to develop a miniature optical system. Soon after the future brain begins to take shape, it sends out two tiny stalks to the front part of the head. These are the optic nerves. On the end of each stalk is a little bulb or swelling the beginning of the eyeball. There is nothing haphazard about this. Every feature appears to be carefully planned in advance. At a given point of time, one tiny group of cells seems to detach itself from the surrounding MEM brains and to move to a central spot, forming a living lens of clear transparent material within the eye. It seems so miraculous we can hardly believe it, but long before the baby is born, that little lens is already located at exactly the right distance from the cornea, or front window, of the eye. Light entering the eye will pass through the lens and be properly focused on the screen at the back of the eyeball. There it stimulates myriads of nerve cells, and these in turn transmit the message back to the brain, enabling us to see. 594 Taking Care of Your Eyes The eyeball itself is composed of a tough elastic material called the sclera. Covering more than half of the inside of the eyeball is a living screen, the retina, the most important part of the eye. This special screen of nervous tissue is composed of millions of tiny cells, some shaped like rods, others like cones. These special nerve cells are instantly affected by light rays of all colors. The impulses caused by these rays are relayed back to the receptive areas of the brain. Light entering the cornea, or clear front window of the eye, passes directly through the aqueous, or watery, fluid to the lens of the eye. After passing through the lens, the light rays are bent and brought to a clear focus on the retina, or curved screen, at the back of the eye. The lens itself is very elastic and is composed of a strong elastic capsule, or covering, filled with a jelly-like protein material consisting of transparent fibers. When the lens relaxed or at rest, it assumes a shape similar to an ordinary magnifying glass. How the eye functions 595. But there is a vast difference, for the lens within the eye can change its shape, increasing its magnifying power for fine work and decreasing it for distant vision. All this occurs quite automatically by means of a circular muscle known as the ciliary body. About 70 tiny ligaments stretch out from the edge of the lens to the ciliary muscle, and these hold the lens firmly in place. Movement of this tiny muscle within the eye allows the ligament to either contract or relax. This camera-like mechanism within the eyeball operates quite automatically, so that under normal circumstances our vision is always in sharp focus. As a person grows older his eye's lens loses its elastic nature and becomes relatively a solid mass, a condition known as presbyopia. When this happens the eyes are more or less permanently focused and are no longer able to accommodate for both near or far vision. This is why an older person often needs glasses with bifocal lenses, the lower portion of his glasses being of stronger power for close vision, while the upper portion allows him to see more freely at a distance. The iris is a beautiful circular curtain-like structure lying in front of the lens of the eye. Orientals generally have brown eyes, but Western people may have brown, blue, green, gray, or black, depending upon their family background. The iris has a very important function, for it controls the amount of light that enters the eye. The central black spot, or pupil, opens up wide in darkness, 
but becomes narrowed and small in bright light. The widening and narrowing is done by the iris which acts like the diaphragm on the camera, allowing just the right amount of light to enter the eye, and at the same time giving a greater depth of focus when the opening is small. Thus the size of the pupil is automatically adjusted according to the amount of light and sharpness of vision. Color Vision In the retina, or screen, at the back of the eye there are two types of nerve cells, the rods and cones. Both are sensitive to light, the rods being specially important in a dim light, while the cones react to color and fine detail. You are using your cone cell as you read the words on this page. Notice how you can see this whole page at a glance. In doing this you are using the rod cells which are widely spread throughout the retina. But in reading the fine print you have to focus down on a small central spot, or fovea, on the retina where the cones are very numerous. 596 Taking care your eyes. The retina is well supplied with an important chemical substance called rhodopsin, or visual purple. Light falling on the retina brings about certain chemical changes in the rhodopsin and other substances present in the rods and cones. These changes occur very rapidly, but large quantities of vitamin A are needed to bring this about. If there is any marked deficiency of vitamin A, night blindness may occur. This can usually be corrected by administering suitable amounts of vitamin A in the diet. Sometimes optic nerves are injured because of high blood pressure or hardening of the arteries, so that light rays are prevented from reaching the rod and cone cells of these nerves. A blood clot in the ophthalmic artery may cause complete blindness on the affected side. Other serious diseases such as syphilis may also cause blindness. Common Eye Troubles 597 The eye may be the first organ of to show the presence of disease in some other part of the body. Cataracts are more often seen in older people, but they may occur at any time in life. A cataract is a cloudy, opaque area in the lens of the eye, arising from thickening of the protein substances within the lens itself. Later, a certain amount of calcium may also be deposited in the lens. Cataracts that interfere with normal vision can be removed surgically. The patient may then have to wear glasses with strong lenses to enable him to see clearly. In some cases contact lenses may be used instead of glasses to obtain good vision. Astigmatism is an eye condition in which the vision intends to be blurred, in most cases because the eyeball itself is slightly out of shape. This condition, which often begins early in life, can usually be cor wrecked by suitable glasses. These must be fitted by an after-eye specialist after proper testing of the vision. Color Blindness for some unknown reason, some people are unable to distinguish certain colors, such as red, green, or blue, 2% of all men are said to be blind to red, and an equal number are unable to distinguish green. Such color blindness is very much less frequent in women. Only one woman in every 1250 seems to have any problem in distinguishing reds and greens. The difference between the sexes arises from the fact that color genes are carried in the X chromosomes, the male having only one X chromosomes in which all three color genes must then be present, if he is not to be color blind. Women have two X chromosomes, and for this reason any form of color blindness is very rare in women. People who seem to wear outlandish color may do so because of color blindness. They may actually believe that a suit is gray when in reality it is brown, red, or even green. Schoolboys who are color blind often paint seas and lakes purple, thinking they are using green. Unfortunately, nothing can be done for these people. Most of them have to depend upon other features, such as size, shape, and texture, or the opinions of friends to guide them in their choice. Eye movement. Three separate pairs of muscles are needed to control the movement of the eye. One pair moves the eyeball from side to side. Another pair moves the eye up and down, and the third group keeps the eyeball in an upright position in relation to the body, so that we see objects as they really are. Each group of muscles has its own set of nerves. 598 Taking care of your eyes. One muscle relaxes while the other contracts, thus allowing normal movement of the eye. Through the central nervous system, both eyes operate as one single organ. 
It is true that, if we desire, some of us can cross our eyes for a few seconds, but the picture is a very confusing one. Although the point of clearest vision lies immediately behind the cornea and lens, as explained on page 593, our eyes also take in a much larger field of vision. If we are looking straight ahead, we can easily note some important object to one side or another. We then immediately turn and focus our eyes on that object. This wide peripheral vision is very important for our safety and well-being. Eye Troubles in Children A young child may complain about many things, but he will rarely do so about his eyes. His vision may be blurred, and he may even see double, yet he will not mention it because he doesn't know how clearly he ought to see. If your child is not getting good grades in school, the trouble may be due to poor eyesight. Most of what the average child learns comes to him through his eyes. This means that the child with poor eyesight may have difficulty in keeping up with other children who have better vision. Many a child with poor grades in school has done well after proper glasses have been fitted. Therefore, before your child goes to school he should have an eye test to be sure there is no weakness. Eye Troubles in Children 599 That should be corrected. He should also be given a complete medical examination, because serious conditions of the kidneys and other organs may first show up in the eyes. Proper eye care should begin even before the child is born. Both parents should have blood tests made, preferably before their marriage, to be sure they are free from syphilis and all other serious conditions which may affect their baby's eyesight. A child's eyes may also be damaged by such contagious diseases as smallpox, diphtheria, and gonorrhea. Even so mild a disease as German measles may cause serious deformities in the eyes if contracted by the mother in the first three months of pregnancy. Young children should always be protected against strong sunlight, for this may damage the sensitive nerves of the eye. Gazing at the sun without proper protection is also dangerous. Even dark glasses cannot always be trusted, for the stronger rays of the sun may still come through. Signs of Eye Trouble Many things can go wrong with the eyes of a growing child. An observant parent may note one or more of the following signs of trouble. One inflamed or watery eyes may be due to rubbing of the eyelids. It could also be a sign of eye strain. Two blinking and frowning may indicate some eye condition that should be corrected. Three covering one eye so that the other may see, is another important sign of eye trouble. The two eyes may not be in proper focus. Four tilting the head may occur because the child is trying to bring both eyes into focus. Five frequent crying and headache should also be investigated. Six failure to take part in outdoor games, especially where distant vision is required, may indicate the beginning of eye trouble. Crossed eyes. Some babies appear to be cross-eyed almost from birth, but this is no reason for undue concern. The baby's face is growing rapidly and many changes are to be expected. But if cross-eye continues beyond six months, the child should be examined by an eye specialist. Crossed eyes can usually be straightened, provided the 600 taking care of your eyes. Treatment is started early enough. Even in later life the crossed eyes can still be straightened, giving the face a normal appearance, but by then the vision may be normal in only one eye. Some parents unfortunately have the idea that the child will outgrow crossed eyes. This is partially true, but at the same time something tragic is happening. The child is probably suppressing the vision in one eye. By the time his eyes have straightened out, it may be too late to save the vision in the weaker eye so that in future he will only have the use of one eye. Treatment, place the child under the care of an eye specialist at once. With careful training this condition may be corrected. Proper lenses may be needed, and perhaps a surgical operation. Whatever is required should be done while the child is still able to see with both eyes. Children who still cannot see even with properly fitted glasses should be given school books with larger type. Eye injuries in children. Most children love to play rough games, and unless carefully supervised, they will use sticks and stones to fight miniature battles. Such weapons are dangerous, especially to a child's eyes. 
so are air guns, darts, firecrackers, caps, sharp scissors, slingshots, bows, and arrows. Because boys use these more often than girls, they suffer from eye injuries more frequently. Young children enjoy cutting out designs in paper, but for this they should be provided with blunt end scissors. In choosing toys for a young child, be sure they will not endanger his eyes. Don't encourage him to open a tin or package with a knife or fork. If he wants to help around the house, give him something he can do with safety. Reasonable precautions during the early years will prevent many a needless accident. Proper light for reading. Eye troubles in children are often due to using the eyes in a poorly lighted room. The child's eyelids may be red and swollen and watering more than usual. These are signs that all is not well. Expert attention may be needed to correct some condition without delay. The trouble may be due to poor lighting, either at school or at home. In school the light should enter the room from the left side of the student, never from the front. No child should be exposed to the strong glare of the sun while trying to learn his lessons. Indirect lighting is best, both at home, at school, or at work. As far as possible, try to simulate daylight. Light-colored walls and ceilings are best because they diffuse the light in all directions. Movies and Television Do not allow your child to watch movies or television for long periods of time, for this puts added strain upon his eyes and his nervous system. If a child cannot see well, or feels dizzy or has headaches after reading, be sure that he has a complete eye examination. If you notice that he holds books close to his eyes, or seems to be sensitive to light, or blinks frequently, he may need glasses. If so, they should be properly fitted by an expert in eye care. Guard well your child's vision, for the ability to see is one of life's greatest and most precious gifts of man. 602 Taking care of your eyes. Treating an injured eye. When a small speck of dirt gets into the eye, there is an instant feeling of pain and a sudden outpouring of tears. Nature is trying to wash the foreign body away. Often this is all that is necessary, but there are times when the offending substance may find its way under the eyelid, where it is not so easily dislodged. Treatment, wash your hands thoroughly before attempting to remove the speck of dirt. Then, with the patient looking down, grasp the eyelid gently, holding it between the thumb and forefinger. With the other hand press gently against the skin of the upper lid, turning the eyelid inside out where you can easily see the speck if it is still present. Gently wipe out the dust, using the edge of a clean hand. Injury to eye 603. Kerchief. Try to avoid touching the eyeball itself. Carefully replace the eyelid and leave it alone. If the foreign substance is embedded in the eyeball, take the patient directly to a doctor. Treating a black eye itself. The area around the eye is easily injured by a blow or by walking into a door or some other object in the dark. Soon the skin around the eye turns black because many of the smaller blood vessels under the skin have been torn. It is easy to laugh at such a person, but there is nothing funny about an injured eye, for even a light blow may damage the retina permanently. Treatment, apply cold water to the injured area at once. This will help to control the bleeding and relieve the pain. Better still, wrap a small piece of ice in a thin cloth and apply this directly to the eye, keeping it there until the pain subsides and the swelling goes down. For a more serious injury, pour some cracked ice into a rubber glove, tying shut the open part of the glove, and apply this to the eye, keeping it there several minutes at a time. Repeat every 15 or 20 minutes as long as necessary. If the eyelids are swollen because of insect bites or infection, Add one tablespoon of Epsom salts and an equal amount of ordinary salt to a pint of boiled water. Warm this solution before applying it to the eyelid, but do not make it too hot. Dip a cotton pad or a clean handkerchief in the solution and apply directly to the swollen lid, keeping it there for several minutes at a time. Repeat this treatment four or five times a day as needed. Burns around the eyes. Serious burns may occur at work and around the home. Housewives may be in a hurry to open a bottle and accidentally splash some chemical into their eyes. Plastic sprays, 
such as those used for refinishing furniture, hair setting, or for repelling insects, may cause eye trouble. Treatment Wash out the irritating substance at once, using ordinary water. Don't rush around looking for some special solution. Plain water is best. Just hold your hand under the running water and bathe your face and eyes, allowing the water to run freely over. 604 Taking care of your eyes. The injured area. As soon as the pain begins to subside, cover the eye with a clean eye pad or folded cloth and go at once to the nearest hospital or see your doctor. Eyelid infections. Infections of the eyelids are usually due to germs finding their way into the skin around the lashes. At times one of the oil glands may become blocked, forming a chalazion, or blind sty. Treatment, apply warm, moist compresses several times a day, treating the infection for at least 10 minutes each time. Procure a saturated solution of boric acid from your local medical store for this treatment. Plain warm water may be used if boric acid is not readily available. Most infections will disappear within a few days with this simple treatment. If they do not, be sure to see your doctor, for more serious infections are best treated by an eye specialist. Acute conjunctivitis, pink eye. Sometimes the surface of the eyeball and the underside of the eyelids become inflamed from exposure to dust and germs. At first the eyes are red, dry, and burning. Later there may be pus and watery secretion. During sleep this material dries, making the lashes stick together. Treatment, apply warm, moist compresses several times a day, using the saturated solution of boric acid mentioned above. More severe cases should be treated by a physician, especially if there is any ulceration of the cornea, or front of the eye. Trachoma. Trachoma is a serious eye condition often found in Northern Africa, the Middle East, Southern Europe, and the Far East. It is highly contagious in its early stages and may be transmitted by direct contact or by handling contaminated articles, such as towels and handkerchiefs. At first this disease, which is caused by a virus, resembles conjunctivitis, described above. However, it is far more stubborn and may return several times after having apparently cleared up. Sometimes small ulcers form on the cornea and interfere with the patient's vision. Scar tissue may also form under the lids. Diseased Condition 605 Turning them inward and causing the lashes to rub against the cornea. Trachoma is always more prevalent among those who live in unsanitary surroundings. In the past it often caused blindness, but today it has largely been brought under control, thanks to modern antibiotic medicines. Treatment, trachoma responds well to sulfa drugs. One useful medicine is sulfadiazine ophthalmic ointment 5 per center. This should be applied to the inside of the lower lid on the affected eye three times a day. Another useful medicine is sulfisoxazol, gantrosin, ophthalmic solution ointment or applied three times a day. Teramycin, 250 million Guaranese capsules, or tablets, may be given three times a day during the acute stages, avoid rubbing the eyes with dirty fingers and soiled towels handkerchiefs. Good habits of hygiene and cleanliness are essential, but it is equally important to take medicine as prescribed. Allergic conditions, hay fever. Hay fever and other allergic conditions are frequent causes of eye irritation. Many people are sensitive to dust, molds, pollens, face powder, dandruff, feathers, drugs, tobacco smoke, and other irritating substances. When the eye is affected, it becomes red and inflamed, and there may be intense itching. Bright sunlight seems to aggravate the condition, and rubbing the eyes bring no relief. Treatment, if possible, try to find the offending substance and eliminate it. This may not be easy because several different ones may be causing trouble at the same time. Avoid the use of strong soaps and anything else that may irritate the skin, especially around the eyes. Simple antihistaminic medicines, such as Benadryl, 50 mg 3 or 4 times a day, may bring relief. If the condition persists, see your family doctor or an eye specialist. Surgery of the eyes. When the cornea, or clear window, 
of the eye has been damaged by disease or injury, scar tissues may cover the pupil, causing partial or complete blindness. By means of a delicate surgical operations it is now possible to remove the scar tissue and to replace it with a graft from the eyes of someone else, so that the one who is blind may see. 606 Taking care of your eyes. This operation, known as corneal transplant, is being widely used today. To do any good, the tissue for the graft must be removed from the donor's eyes immediately after death and then sent to the nearest eye bank, where it is kept in a special solution until it is needed to help some blind person. Unfortunately, not all blind people benefit from this type of operation. Blindness arises from many other causes besides scar tissue, and in most cases these involve other parts of the eye. Blind people sometimes become excited over reports that someone's sight has been restored by a wonderful operation, and they feel sure the same thing could happen in their case, only to be disappointed to learn that they have the wrong type of blindness. Before a blind person rushes off to some distant center, it is best for him to consult a local ISP list to find out if his condition is one that can be cured or relieved by these newer techniques. Cataract Few things are more feared among elderly people than the POS ability of going blind. There are many different reasons for losing the gift of sight, but one of the most frequent causes in old people is cataract. Almost every person over 80 years of age will show some tendency toward the development of this DISA.SE. In cataract, as previously noted, the lens of the eye becomes clouded so that light is prevented from passing through to the retina at the back of the eyeball. Usually both eyes are involved, with one side more advanced than the other. The clouding begins at the edge of the lens, and may not interfere with a person's vision until the disease is fairly well advanced. This clouding of the lens may also be seen in most animals if they live long enough. When the clouding occurs in the central part of the lens, the patient may notice he has better vision in a dim light, when his pupils are more widely dilated, which allows him to see around the cataract. In bright daylight his vision may improve if he wears an eyeshade or tinted glasses. Most cataracts develop slowly. Gradual loss of vision in middle-aged and older people may be the first sign of a developing cataract. Elderly people living alone are more likely to have cataracts. Many of them fail to take enough water and other liquids to keep the blood. Glaucoma 607 Stream flowing as it should. Most of them need extra vitamins. Some elderly people are suffering from diabetes and should be given insulin or whatever is needed to bring their disease under control. Diabetic patients are always more prone to have cataracts. Cataracts in children may be the results of an accident, such as when a sharp object penetrates the eyeball and damages the lens, causing a cataract to form. Cataracts are sometimes seen in premature babies, or they may form later as a hereditary disease of the eye. Treatment In the early stages before the cataract has fully developed, it is well to change the eyeglass prescriptions every year or two. This helps to maintain useful vision. More advanced cataracts should be removed by surgery. This is the only reliable method of treatment and can be done at any age. No other operation has brought so much happiness to so many people as the removal of cataracts. The operation is simple but highly effective. Using local anesthesia, the surgeon makes a small incision in the eye and removes the cloudy lens. Healing usually takes about 10 days, and there are very few complications. But the operation must be carried out at the right time and under proper conditions. Glaucoma Glaucoma is a serious eye condition and a leading cause of blindness among adults today. One out of every eight blind people are victims of glaucoma, pronounced glaucoma. Probably all of these people had normal sight during their earlier years, but something went wrong during their 40s, 50s, or 60s, causing them to go blind. It is believed that one person out of every 50 in middle and later life probably has glaucoma. Most of them do not know they have the disease, but they are gradually going blind. Glaucoma is very difficult to detect in the early stages. It usually comes very slowly and treacherously, but can generally be checked if discovered early enough. 
often the only indication of trouble will be that a person has bought several pairs of glasses, hoping to relieve severe headache and other eye discomforts. It is important to realize that a new pair of glasses may not always be the answer to your visual problems. If the pressure within the eyeball rises suddenly, as it sometimes does, the eye may become red and the cornea or window of the eye. 608 Taking care of your eyes Will have a steamy appearance. The patient complains of very severe pain in the eye and may feel that the top of his head is blowing off. With chronic glaucoma there is usually no pain, but the patient may note a loss of side vision. Objects may be blurred or foggy, and street lights may appear to have a halo or rainbow around them. As stated earlier in this chapter, the eye is shaped somewhat like a ball. It consists of various delicate structures such as the cornea, retina, optic nerve, and the lens. The lens is near the cornea, or window, of the eyeball, and divides the eye into two chambers. Each of these chambers is filled with a fluid different from that in the other. The various delicate structures of the eye need a steady supply of nourishment, and the waste materials must be carried away promptly. This means that there must be a constant circulation of the fluids within the eye at all times. Under normal conditions the fluids within the eyeball have a pressure between 10 and 20 mm, of mercury, but if, because of injury or for any other reason, these fluids enter the eye more rapidly than they leave, the pressure within the eyeball naturally increases. When the pressure inside the eye increases, it causes the delicate fibers of the optic nerve and the retina to stretch, forcing them backward. At the same time the blood vessels within the eye are compressed. Only the nerve cells associated with the edges of vision are affected at first, but unless the pressure is relieved, this process will continue until all connections of the optic nerve are crushed, and the patient suddenly finds that he is blind. Treatment Acute glaucoma is a serious emergency requiring immediate attention. In some cases by giving proper medications your doctor can bring this pressure under control. In other cases, an operation may be required. In one type of operation the doctor trims off a piece of iris, performing what is known as an iridectomy. This relieves the congestion and allows the fluid within the eye to drain away normally. This in turn relieves the congestion and pain. The patient's vision in most cases returns to normal. Chronic glaucoma is far more common than the acute type. To guard against this have a thorough eye examination at least once every two years to be sure you do not have the disease. Many glaucoma patients do not need surgery. The eye specialist may advise the use of special drops in the eyes, one of the most common being pilocarpine. Such medicines must be prescribed by a physician. If there is any question, it is best to seek professional advice. How to help the blind 609. Without delay. Try to avoid emotional upsets as much as possible. It is better not to use tea, coffee, tobacco, or alcohol. Be sure to see your eye doctor regularly, and whenever there seems to be any change in your vision. A word about blindness. Sad to say, a few people are born blind. But most blind people have lost their eyesight through accidents, injuries, or illness. Regardless of the reason of blindness, it is important for the individual to accept his disability and learn to live with it. This is not easy, especially if the blindness comes on suddenly. If it comes more slowly, it is well for the person to recognize what is happening, so that he can prepare himself for the time when his vision may be totally gone. With proper training, a blind person can do many things to help himself, particularly when he is in familiar surroundings. Usually he can travel alone and buy the things he needs. He can dress himself and tell the time by special watch with hands that he can feel. He should always carry a white cane with which test the ground and the objects around him as he walks along. The white cane is also a sign to motorists that he has the right of way at all times. Children who are blind may need special schooling during the early years, but as soon as possible they should attend regular schools and associate with other children of their own age. As they grow older they should be taught some suitable trade or professions. Most blind people are intelligent and enjoy associating with sighted people. 
they should be treated as normal individuals and should train themselves to be as independent as possible. Blind people can be helped by friends who are willing to read letters, newspapers, and book to them. While the radio keeps them in touch with the world, there are many personal services that they need and appreciate. A blind child should not be sent away to some special school. He will surely do better in his own neighborhood school. If at all possible, he should be kept in home environment, provided he is given special help with his studies. He may not progress quite as rapidly as the sighted child, but he will usually do quite well. Treat him just like any other member of the family. He should be neither pitted nor rejected, for with